Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to Ment FX. In this episode, we are not going to take an in-depth look at concept or anything of that sort, but instead we're going to kind of work through the FTMO challenge that I just undertook on a 50k account and how I went about passing it within two days. Now, as we take a look at this, the matrix is available to you guys right here. You can see the max daily loss was never exceeded, the max loss wasn't, profit target was hit, as you can see from this, um, took about 33 trades. Um, the biggest loss was 12k, uh, was 1.2k. However, the actual drawdown on the overall account was actually negative 390. This is due to just some higher risk trades taken when my account balance was a little bit higher. And if we go over to the actual C Trader where we were able to take this account, and for some of you that don't know, a demo FTMO account is what you'll only have, even if it's funded, um, as you can see here. But you can see that this is a challenge account, a live challenge account, and it is passed with the exception of the minimum days. So we're just trying to wait these out very quickly. Now, going into the history, just going to expand this very quickly. We're going to take a look at this on an actual chart in just a second with a little bit of concept rundown to show you guys how I took it. Now, again, for some of you that don't think there are any losses that come with smart money, this will show you the complete opposite. There are losses that will happen with smart money. However, your wins will always exceed your um, losses if you understand what your edge is and you understand how to trade it with your proper management. Now, every trade was managed very similarly with a 1% risk or 0.5% risk or um, I took a little bit of a higher risk of, uh, I believe the highest was 2%, but that was after my account was up 1K. And after losing that, I believe uh, seen right here, we stuck to very normal risk and built that account right back up. And as you can see, this is all done, um, pretty much the bulk of the trades were taken on the 18th. As you can see, all these 18th, that's all Euro, US dollar, some sells, some buys, and the other bulk was taken on the 19th. And after that, as you can see, for the most part, it's just been tiny open and closed trades to reach the minimum trading day requirement on FTMO. And as you can see, everything is passed with the um, with just the exception of this, which we're just waiting for right now. So just looking at this, you can actually tell that most of the things that helped me pass it was honestly just one trade. If we go and click onto here and um, view it on the actual chart, just very quickly, you can see how small these positions are. And they're based on very, very tiny plays. And of course, you know, you have the partials, partials stop the break even. Um, we can zoom back out, take a look at some more trades. So as you can see, these right here, the most profitable ones came from this position right here. And you'll see how much trades or actually how many partials were actually taken for me during this entire sell. So we got into an original sell up here and then there was a confirmation sell that we got on right here. And along the way, we partialed here, we partialed here, here, um, here, and then overall the position closed as you can see. So the point of showing you guys this is that despite this being one entry, the way we were able to manage our risk throughout allowed us to make a lot on this trade. Now this trade again could have went to here and stopped us out, but we still would have made money. And this is the importance of understanding your own risk management and how you're going to manage your trades. Now let's take a look at this exact trade and how we took it. And we'll pretty much let that stand as the majority of this video. So um, this was today. We don't need to really view this. Let's delete all this stuff on here and go to the four hour as it was a four hour sell. So if any of you remember, we made a video talking a little bit about this, talking about how we had this Wyckoff distribution begin to occur and this move down showing us that sign of weakness in this trend. Now, as we came and made the sign of weakness in the mentorship, um, we were expecting to have this sign of weakness provide us a, um, an up move from the order blocks in this area. So again, if we went and refine those order blocks, so if we just replay this backwards and get a little bit lower to maybe 30 minute, um, you can begin to refine these order blocks in this area to potentially this down candle before the last up move. Um, that pretty much functions as a good one. And we can go back out and find that sign of weakness. So there it is. And after we had that sign of weakness, we used um, the idea of this order block here to give us a set up why coffee and wise again go in here alone and take a look at this to catch the one the 60s that happened on this move up now again that one the 60 actually stopped me a break even before continuing so that wasn't the book of um those wins that you saw on the ftmo challenge but the actual book of them came from this order block right here so as you'll see as you follow this back up if this was a utad which is what we had expected this high to be we were actually expecting to see a test um, come into somewhere within this overall order block right here. So let's draw that out. 
expecting for prices to come into this order block and then continue to completely new lows below the liquidity here, the liquidity here, or even potentially into the OB 2.0 and order blocks that began to form in these areas. Now, despite the fact that that didn't happen, as you can very much see right here, this right here, this mini movement from here to here was the only movement I needed to pretty much pass the entire challenge. And how was I able to do that? Because I understood the power of waiting for fractal for the fractal nature of the market to give me an entry and then using that entry to get myself out as per liquidity levels throughout the trade that way if the trade did want to run to these lows i'd still have positions running that could um, of course secure me the entire position or if it didn't want to run all the way that a correct belief in the mitigation of this order block wouldn't lead me to lose any money or even um, in this case, make me enough to continue to the next move. So if we go into our, um, if we go into our Discord very quickly and find where this original cell was. We can go and um, locate that. So yeah, as you can see, we completed that right there off of um, where was it? Here we go off of this cell right here. So actually, maybe it's a little bit higher up. Um, Yep. So we had price come into that area and we were looking for cells off of 15 second distribution within that area, which we're going to take a look at in a second. And as you can see, after we got involved um, on euro US dollar, we pretty much held it, began the partial along the way. As you can see, we began the partial um, and we took it to lower prices. So if we actually look in here, there's that um, four hour shot of where we got involved and we were looking for the lower prices to be met. And as those lower prices were met, um, we were able to take that to the downside just like that and pass the challenge relatively quickly. So let's take a look at how that was done and why um, risk management is one of the most important things when it comes to passing your challenges or even um, consistently building an account, right? So again, as you, as you all saw, we have this right here. Um, everything, was, everything was respected and we were able to do this relatively quickly. So despite the fact that we have multiple trades that were taken, this was again done in two days for the, for the most part. And this was all done ultimately on one trade. Yeah, this entire move right here up till this area here to the 4.4K mark on the account was all done in one trade. And that was this mini trade right here. So how do we get involved? Um, we had this order block occur here, right? Last up move before the down move. There's an imbalance um, that you can also see from here to here. So again, expecting what based on the concepts we teach on this channel, uh, expecting price to fill this area, mitigate this order block somewhere inside it. We don't know exactly where and continue to lower prices to where potentially, right? As you can already see this last order block, these order blocks down here, or at the, at the lowest, this trend line of liquidity or just this liquidity right equal low so that that shows that there's liquidity here and potentially price wants to get there or even if it wants to to lower prices in here which also function as order blocks or even if we wanted to continue holding to get below the order block i mean to get below the liquidity here into deeper discount prices on order blocks in here however as you can see for the most part everything was filled so i was actually expecting this not to last as long as um to not basically want to make a run all the way down here. So uh, when we first got involved on this, I actually was expecting a run to at least these lows. So it's a little bit sad to see that it stopped there. But again, it doesn't matter because there's a specific way that I like to manage my risk. Now, let's go down to the 15 minute and understand how it is that we got involved on this trade. So as price came into this area, you can see that we began to distribute and we made a video on this. So make sure you check out the previous ones. But there is a distribution right here. Why coffee and wise? Um, again, we have to get down a little bit of a lower time frame to see it, so we can do that very quickly, but there is Wyckoff in there. Now, as price began to break down and show us that it had a bearish nature intended for it, we noted this last up candle before the down move, as you can see right here. Now, that last up candle before the down move functioned as a new area for us to look for potential sells. And um, I believe if we are able to do it, we can go in here and go to the 15 second just like that, we were able to find a beautiful trade off of this distribution pattern right here. So um, if any of you know, and any of you are in the mentorship, we use the MentFX block to get involved on this move here. Um, so that's why we were able to get involved despite the fact that um, none of the final order blocks held from here. But the reality is we waited for price to come up here, give us the buying climax, the AR, the ST, the up thrust, the UTAD, break down, give us the test, 
perfectly into the last order block, break down even more, give us more distributions, give us more distributions, break down, and our final entry was right here. And that entry from these order blocks right here, as you can see, the last up candles before the down move that broke down in structure, coming back up to test that order block and continued lower was the entry that we were able to catch for our Euro USD plays. So if I just draw this out for some of you guys right here and just mark this down for you, you guys can see that this entry was ultimately a sniper. Now, this entry also, um, if we exit this very quickly and go back to the auto, um, zoom out right here, let's go back to the five minute chart and just take a look at where this entry was, somewhere inside here, as you can see, right? Overall, that ran a total of 1 to 50 RR. Now, Based on the previous video where we looked at the 105 RR in two days or whatever it was, we didn't catch 50%, 50 percent, 50 RR on this trade at all, right? The reality of this trade is that throughout it, throughout throughout the time spent um, uh, managing it, we got in and out of the trade throughout the entire play, right? The first play was literally made off of a move of three pips, then of um, 13 pips. And the final part was taken out about 23 pips. And as you can see, we had one sell position and a second one. So, um, oops. So going back to the chart right here, what you'll notice is we used the MantFX block to get involved on the overall play earlier, right? So um, you can also use just this general order block right here. So this was our original sell, just like that. And we had 0.5% risk on this going to lower prices. Right. And then we had the better entry that we waited for to enter another 0.5% risk on here. So already this one to 50 is already guaranteeing you about 25% instead of 50% because you're taking half risk. Since I diversified my risk between both of these trades, if case that in case price didn't want to come higher into this order block here and wanted to basically continue lower from here, then I'd be able to take it lower and start to take out positions and partials at important structural lows and at potentially important order blocks further down and imbalances because what do we know about imbalances and understand about them price can stop at them and then completely um can completely reverse so we waited for the 0.5 percent entry off of this play right here and then we took another 0.5 percent off of waiting for a refined entry here so overall we had one percent risk on this and as we look back to it as we entered if we just take a quick look at this and go to the 15 second again, as we entered, we didn't just hold this entire move. The reality of what happened here is I took my first partial right here, just like we looked at. So this was ultimately partial one. Now, again, I'm, I can't, I'm not looking back at it. So I'm just kind of doing this based on what I see. But when I entered this, the first partial on this original trade right here was right here. Okay. So that one, the 50 trade that really ran one, the 50 ended up being a first partial at one to four, one to five, right? But despite the fact that it's one to five, that's a 2.5% partial already on the account, which is um, about one fourth of what you need to complete the FTMO challenge. So as you can see, just about one minute, two minutes into a trade, we've completed about one fourth of the challenge. Now, as we continued, we mitigated our risk. Um, and we went to break even at this point, of course, because we've already hit our partial and we continue to look for new areas of partial. Now, partialing can happen at multiple areas. Partialing can be done at imbalances in price, right? So partialing can be taken at imbalances. Partialing can be taken at liquidity lows because they function as what? Stop um, entries and profit taking for the composite man, or they could be taking it at order blocks, right? So order blocks that are, have been unfilled along the way, price may come into them stop and then re and then reverse and that's another area where you can potentially look for profit taking now along the way we took partials at multiple areas as you saw as you saw in this image right here and as you can see most partials were taken at lows so this first partial was taken at that first 15 second low to ensure that if prices wanted to turn around and continue going higher into this order block that we had secured partials properly and they were done as per structure because as structural plays are put into notion we can again judge from the previous structure video that price could have easily reversed and continued higher and this would have then looked like either a loss or even a break even but in this case it's actually secured as 2.5 percent now this did not happen but instead we finally got the run that we were waiting for and this run continued to go now as that run continues because it's part of also larger and higher time frame plays we were 
we didn't have to just go as per the 15 second, 15 second, 15 second, 15 second lows and partials like that. Instead, we could make our way higher and begin to use higher time frame partials. So as we get to the minute, we notice that the next order block that's been untapped is right here. And what happened was the next partial was taken in this order block at about one to eight. So instead of securing, you know, 8% or even 4% in this case, we secured another 1%, securing 3.5% on the position total. Now, because we've taken more positions off, we waited for our next partial to be where? At the more important low. Because what happens at this low, you have tons of people that bought back here and have positions running and have stop losses and sell and sell stops right under. So the so if smart money wants to take their uh, positions lower, that could be a great area to again, unload more profits. And that's exactly what we did. Again, one to 20. Now, if we keep playing this out, you'll notice that. So if we, um, if we zoom back out on that, you'll notice that at that point, price came just a little bit lower, dropping into some deeper discount order blocks and imbalance fills before then finally reversing and making its way all the way back up literally it didn't come back to break even, but pretty much to the original entry. And to be honest, I was stopped out on this at this point right here and believe that I got into one more sell overall back when it came up here. And that was my final trade that completed the challenge. And the idea of this is understanding how, again, partials can give you areas to exit early and secure positions and, and profits for your overall trades, but also give you the chance to get back in at another premium price before prices come lower. Now, as we zoom into this, um, as we as we just take a look at this overall move here, and we've and we've zoomed into it, maybe on a 15, five minute, one minute and even lower, you notice how much potential down movement you had in this with potential partials at all of these areas of liquidity, which are just basically these lows that I'm showing you right here, and how many opportunities you had to get back in using potential order blocks that were left behind to get into order blocks that were left behind to get into order blocks that were left behind bef with options to partial at many points before price finally reversed and then began to make higher highs above the four hour. So if we zoom back over here above the four hour expectation. So despite the fact that the Wyckoff schematic that we had labeled out here was fully wrong, and that this test was not a test to go and see lower prices below the sign of weakness and to meet more lows, we were still able to catch a trade that completely um, was profitable, that was able to lock us in enough to pass the entire FTMO challenge, as you can see in the history there, and as you can see um, on the client area position right here. And now we can proceed to go into the future. Now, the important part of this is understanding that your moves are not wrong. Because again, smart money and what we do with smart money is we trade nothing more than the footprints of what they leave behind. And that means that when we get involved in those footprints, even if they are Wyckoff and they look perfect, it does not mean that that Wyckoffian footprint needs to deliver you prices that are completely, um, that are basically your final targets, right? If this was to continue running, we would have options to continue to take out profits at certain order blocks, at certain order blocks, at certain liquidity points. However, I would still be, or even you on lower time frames, able to get involved on new buy to sell candles, buy to sell candles, buy to sell candles, because all of these along the way, if they want to deliver us bearish price action, would give you options to get back in because smart money gets back in. We can also get back in using their footprints. So thank you so much for watching, guys. This was a little update on my current FTMO challenge. We're going to be taking the verification once we get the um, verification account in, I believe, like two days, three days, whatever it might be. And we might have a video on that. So thank you so much for watching. And always remember to partial. Thank you so much, guys. See you next time.